dear students welcome to the session on bilinear transformation the transformation suppose i am taking w is equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus d where a b c d are some complex constant such that you should get a d minus b c should be not equal to zero then this w equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus d is called as bilinear transformation note the bilinear transformation is also known as mobius transformation because it was invented by a great mathematician mobius and also it is known as linear fractional transformation see the power of z is 1 and power of w is 1 so it is also known as linear fractional transformation and next we have to concentrate what is this ad minus bc now you take the four constants a b c d i can write like this a b c d now taking the determinant i will get ad minus bc suppose if my ad minus bc is equal to 0 then every point in the z plane becomes a critical point that's why we say for bilinear transformation ad minus bc should be not equal to 0 the expression ad minus bc equal to 0 is called as the determinant of the bilinear transformation now let us go into the formula for bilinear transformation now in the z plane you will be given three points z1 z2 z3 and there is a w plane and you will be given three points w1 w2 w3 now the relation between z plane and w plane is given as w equal to f of z that is what already given in the definition w is equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus d so this is already given in the problem solving point of view three points will be given in z plane and similarly three points will be given in w plane now my job is to find the bilinear transformation that is i want to find the relation for example substituting this points z in w in the formula of bilinear transformation finally i have to bring the answer for example like 2z minus 3 divided by 3z plus 2y something like this a z plus b divided by c z plus d now remembering the formula is very easy if you know the natural numbers the first three natural numbers are 1 2 3 and when we write this natural numbers in the reverse it is going to be 3 2 1 so now it is going to be very easy guys to remember the formula my left hand side should be w and my right hand side should be z so it is very easy see in the numerator leave the first data right 1 2 3 and in the denominator right in the reverse way 3 2 1 similarly 1 2 3 3 2 1 so it is very easy to remember the formula for bilinear transformation and next we are going to use the component to divide into rule in some part of the problem so whenever a by b is equal to c by d i think it is very easy to remember from your school days a plus b divided by a minus b is going to be equal to c plus d divided by c minus d if this is true then i can write like this and some students misunderstand a by b is equal to a plus b divided by a minus b this is never true so if this expression is true then i can write this expression is also true so with this basic ideas let us go into the problem find the bilinear transformation which maps infinity i 0 into 0 minus i infinity remember students always the first point given is related with z plane and then the second set of points is related with w plane now what is the trouble in this problem the trouble is infinity if you have number i can easily substitute in the formula like if all the data are like 1 1 3 2 1 2 then i can substitute this z1 z2 z3 similarly w1 w2 w3 in the formula and i get the answer for the bilinear transformation but now the trouble is i have infinity in the points so we have to imagine how to tackle this let us go back to the formula suppose i am taking w3 is infinity now how to remove infinity 
we know that 1 by infinity is 0. So, what I am going to do, since w3 is infinity, I am going to take w3 outside from this term. So, I will get w2 divided by w3 minus 1. Similarly, in the denominator, I will take this w3 term out. I will get w by w3 minus 1 into w2 minus w1. So, it is very easy to see. I can cancel this w3 and I can write the remaining expression. And now, in your points w1, w2, w3, they are some numbers w1, w2. It does not matter. w3 is infinity. Suppose you are substituting w3 value alone, what will happen? w minus w1. Since w3 is infinity, 1 by infinity is going to be 0. So, we get 0 minus 1. Similarly, in the denominator, we get 0 minus 1, w2 minus w1. So, I can cancel this minus 1 and minus 1. I will get the expression w minus w1 divided by w2 minus w1. So, what is my conclusion? Hope you have already guessed it. If one term is getting infinity, then I am very happy. I can just neglect the terms. See here, w3 is infinity. So, I can just delete w3 from the formula. Now, the problem has only 6 terms, 2 in the left and 4 terms in the right. Suppose your problem has one more infinity. Let us say z1 is infinity, then you are more lucky. I can just delete this z1 term or omit the z1 term or neglect the z1 term or remove the z1 term, whatever you want, you can just take. So, now the problem contains only four terms. So, getting the final answer is going to be more easy. If you are fortunate, if you have good luck, then you have two infinities, one in z and another in w plane. So, do not miss the problem if you have infinities. So, this problem is a very lucky problem. We have infinity on the both sides that is in w plane as well as z plane. Okay, with this idea, let us go into the problem. Always as I said, it is very important to write the points correctly. Suppose z1 is infinity, z2 is i, z3 is 0. So, in array in exams, suppose you write z1 infinity, z2 is 1, z3 is 0. You will get some answer, but a small mistake leads to 0 marks. So, you should be very careful when you write the points. That is why I always say, step 1, write the given data carefully in the exam point of view. z1 is infinity, z2 i, z3 0. Similarly, w1 0, w2 minus i, w3 is infinity. Step 2, formula for bilinear transformation. Now, we have to write carefully. Since z1 is infinity and w3 is infinity, we have to write z1 is equal to infinity, w3 is equal to infinity. Now, I want to omit both z1 and w3. So, w3 is infinity, z1 is infinity. Omitting this two factors, we get the remaining simplified formula. For that formula, we have to substitute the remaining points. Now, we get w minus w1 divided by w2 minus w1, z2 minus z3 divided by z minus z3. Now, let us substitute the remaining points in this formula. Okay. I am moving to the next slide. So, I am writing the step 1 again. Do not do it in the exams. So, now, substitute the values. w1 is 0, w2 is minus i. So, w minus 0, minus i minus 0, z2 is i, z3 is 0. <coughs> now, it is very easy. I can see w by minus i is equal to i by z. So, w is equal to minus i square by z. We know i square is minus 1. Therefore, w is equal to minus 1 into minus 1 divided by z. So, finally, we get w is equal to 1 by z. Wow! We get the final solution. You can see the typed version. So, this is the bilinear transformation w is equal to f of z for the given point. Now, there comes a question. What is the guarantee that my answer is correct? Suppose a student in a hurry, he may write the answer as w equal to minus 1 by z or w equal to i by z. Now, which is correct? 
is this answer is correct or this one is correct or this is correct now there comes a question so it is very easy students you can verify the answer by yourself hope you have guess how would you do this now i have a transformation w is equal to 1 by z now simply just take the points see here z1 is infinity z2 is i z3 is 0 now substitute the points in the relation when i substitute infinity i'll get 1 by infinity that is 0 this is correct then when you go for w2 z2 is i so 1 by i so w2 is 1 by i we never keep the i in the denominator so multiplying and dividing by i my w2 is i by i square i square is minus 1 so we get minus i done in the similar way w3 if i put z3 equal to 0 1 by 0 is infinity so i get w3 so i can easily verify final answer by substituting z1 z2 z3 values in the expression to get the correct w1 w2 w3 in the given question hope you understand students this would have give a clear idea about the formulas on bilinear transformation and how to choose the points and how to tackle when you get infinity in the next session we are going to see some more problems suppose you have infinity only on w plane or infinity only on z plane or no infinity in such cases how to tackle the problems we are going to see in the forthcoming videos hope you understand thanks for watching hope you found this video helpful subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends see you in the next video bye bye